Hey everybody, Jason here. Welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. Now what you're about to hear is not actually, well, it's not a video, it is, it's kind of a long story, <laughs> but uh, long story short, we have launched a publication at medium.com. It's called, surprise, surprise, Linux for Everyone. And uh, one of the first articles I just published today about an experience that I have seen time and time again in the Linux world that drives me crazy. And I don't really have enough time to, to do a fully produced video on this, but I wanted you to at least hear the message because it's an important one. Now, there are some links that might be needed for uh, further comprehension of this topic, and I'll have those listed in the description for this video. Let's just get right into it. You know, I'm part of a Linux gaming group on Facebook, and yesterday I audibly groaned in exasperation when I saw yet another Linux beginner gleefully announce, okay guys, I'm installing SteamOS. Well, those of you who've been immersed in the Linux world long enough might already be groaning alongside me, and for good reason. This is absolutely the wrong experience for these enthusiastic Linux newbies to have. While at one point, Valve's SteamOS was a shining beacon of hope for the future of Linux gaming, the distro has languished. It received a minor update, that was SteamOS 2.195 in the summer of 2019, but that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant because SteamOS is still based on Debian 8.1, which was released in 2015. Now let me give Valve the praise it's due before we continue. The company may have let SteamOS fade, for now, but it has since focused its efforts on vastly improving the entire Linux gaming ecosystem. Steam Proton has enabled literally thousands of Windows exclusive games to be installed and played right inside the Steam for Linux client. No headaches, no tweaking, no fuss. For the most part, it just works. Valve has also made substantial improvements to the open source graphics drivers that are used on Linux, and we're reaching this tipping point where so many of the non-native Linux games perform better than their native Windows counterparts. It's far from perfect, but it's far, far better than the outlook we had in 2015. And today, you can effortlessly install modern Linux distributions like Ubuntu, Pop OS, Manjaro, Solus, or Elementary OS, and get your proprietary NVIDIA graphics driver automatically installed. You can enjoy an operating system that looks fantastic and is constantly updated with features and security patches. You can quickly install software like Lutris or GameHub and leverage Valve's Proton to enjoy games on non-Steam platforms like Epic Games or like Blizzard. You can interact with and get help from the massive, helpful communities that these distributions foster. Well, here we go. That's why I was perplexed and borderline angry this morning at how many people I'm still seeing gravitate towards SteamOS. Within the large Linux for Everyone community, I have never once seen it recommended to a new or veteran Linux user. Not once but I can't fault those users for their choice. I was fortunate enough to have an instant community spring up around me when I started my own Linux journey, but as I learned in my recent interview with Thomas of Draugr OS, some folks aren't that fortunate. So why is this happening? Why are these new Linux users flocking to an outdated distribution that will only serve to sour their opinion on desktop Linux? They probably did what most people do before they found a community that they can trust. They relied on Google. And that, my friends, is a giant mistake. So I put myself in the shoes of these new users, and I googled best Linux gaming distro. The top three results, arguably the only ones that really matter, included two websites that I've even visited frequently, It's Foss and TechRadar. All three of these sites recommend SteamOS. Not only that, they boldly put the outdated distribution in the number one spot. You'll find links to all three of these articles embedded further down the page on this Medium article. And I'm only including the links 
so that our readership can put some pressure on these outlets, or at least try to imbue them with some common sense. Now, yes, I slightly deceived you with that headline. (laughs) While it is Google ultimately leading readers to these articles, it's the authors and editors pinning them, or rather updating them, who are to blame. And pick any or all of these articles, and you will easily decipher the illusion. This is now old, recycled content with new dates slapped on top. These pieces were almost certainly published years ago with smart SEO tactics, which Google rewarded. And so the strategy now becomes keeping that sweet traffic flowing in. The objective becomes clicks, not helping users. And just think about how many users are potentially being misled. In fact, by not updating these popular articles with more recent common sense recommendations, I'd argue they are actually hindering impressionable new users and directly contributing to a negative perception of desktop Linux. As my friend James Mawson so persuasively states, desktop Linux truly needs a professional marketing engine to avoid situations like this, situations that can literally last years. And James will be publishing an article here on this very topic, so we'd love for you to follow along and stay tuned. In the meantime, I wanted to introduce you to a fresh piece published just today from an outlet that actually uses Linux on a daily basis, an outlet where the founder is actually a Linux gamer, and uh, it is called The Best Linux Distros for Gaming in 2021, published by Liam Daw at GamingOnLinux.com. And you'll also find at the bottom of this article contact info for all three of the websites listed above. Please ask them to update their recommendations to reflect the modern Linux desktop and to consider the damage they're doing in the name of just chasing strong SEO and more clicks. On behalf of everyone here at Linux for Everyone, thank you for reading or for listening. And you guys take care and take care of each other. Till next time.